How the hell is everybody doing tonight? Man Cave here. I know you guys are probably like, Jesus Christ, why do you keep doing videos inside the studio? Always got a lot of shit I'm working on. Simplest answer I can give you guys. Right now what I'm doing is actually, as you can see, this is the uh, night hauler here. King Hauler is actually hooked up to the uh, flatbed for right now. Got the umbilical cord attached to the old, uh... oh no, oh god, we gotta call OSHA now, there's been an incident here. Some moron knocked the truck frame off the jack stands and somebody got hurt, oh shit. Anywho. The reason this is all taken apart the way it is right now is because I'm doing a, uh, what I was supposed to do a long ass time ago. And that would be locking the rear differentials on both Tamiya semis. Now, how do you lock a rear axle on one of these semis, do you ask? Well, the answer is, normally you can't, because they do not have the lock pin, like the high lift does, and if you chop the frame off and made it shorter and made it a single cab, or a single axle, then yes, you could use a, a lockable high lift rear axle, but what the hell fun is that? You want to have a dual... A tandem axle tractor. So, the answer to that question is right here. JB Quick. The King Hauler has already seen that. Which I know I had somebody a while ago tell me that the, uh, the King Hauler is designed after Kenworth. I can see some of the Kenworth stylings in it, but when you look at the grill of it, it screams Peterbilt. And Peterbilt's of all, basically all I've ever driven. And it resembles a Peterbilt an awful lot, especially the cab. Most noticeably the air cleaners on it too. But either way, getting off topic there, I'm going to show you guys, spinning around here, and lower you guys down. If I can find the freaking, there we go, look at that. Genius with a camera. Seems like I've been doing all my filming late at night lately. What you're looking at there is the uh, primary drive axle, which we need to go in here and take uh, take these pieces off so we can actually take the axle itself apart. Because this does require you to fully disassemble your axle. So we take that girder loose, come around here, swing the other side. Now I'm just going to let you guys in. We're already three minutes deep. This is going to be a long video, you guys, so settle in. Uh, while I'm disassembling right now, grab some popcorn, something to drink, some cigarettes, whatever. Whatever you gotta do to get comfortable, because it's gonna be a little bit. We're gonna be here for a little while, so do what you gotta do to get comfortable, and uh, when you come back, I might have this axle taken apart. So, for those of you that aren't getting something to eat, drink, making a sandwich, doing whatever, I'm removing the uh, shock mounts that hold the upper and lower together. And now you got to remember, you take and you flip this over so that when you put it back together, in my case it's easy because it's dusty side up. But that could quickly change once I start unscrewing the actual axle itself. 
So, thanks to Tamiya's awesome scale design, I have to undo eight screws to completely take this axle apart. Not a problem. I haven't been using my uh, nut driver lately, as you guys can tell. Because quite frankly, I can do this faster by hand than I could with that nut driver. So, there's all our nuts and bolts. And now we're left with the axle. So, what we do here is pop the whole thing out, carrier and everything. Set the two shafts down. And now comes the fun part, mixing the JB Weld. Now, a little bit of this goes a long way, and when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. I know a lot of you have probably used JB Weld before, but for those of you who have not, it is a two-part epoxy basically that forms something basically one tube is steel which is the blue tube on JB Quick which is always the black and then you have your hardener which is always the gray that's true on any type now this is just a uh, soldering tool now, as you can see right here, it's kind of looking like Bob Ross here with painting, but what you do here is you mix these two colors together. It's kind of like mixing Bondo. you got to mix the hardener into the actual steel itself. And this is why it's crucial that you get equal parts, because you don't want more hardener in it than you, want, than you have steel, because otherwise you're not going to have that strong of a hold. And... Vice versa, if you don't put enough hardener in it, it'll take longer to set up and cure, and sometimes it won't cure, period. So we just take and we dab some of this on here. And we're going to take the small shaft that has the uh, pin on it. We're going to take and we're going to coat the pin. Get that pin nice and coated. And then we're also going to take the splined end of the shaft here and we're gonna coat that too and then repeat process on the other shaft except for the fact that with this shaft you only have the splined end so we're just gonna put a little bit of the remaining uh, JB weld put a little over the hole too that way when you stick it in there that's what she said. Just cut the gear nice. And when working with JB Weld, always make sure the tool you're using to apply the JB Weld with is very is completely clean when you're done. So for reference, drop your uh, center diff back in. That way you know which side the short shafts and long shaft go in. Reassemble your short shaft first. As you can tell in this, I did not use roller bearings. I have the standard Tamiya bearings. Now what this is going to do when you stick the other end in is it's going to grab that other shaft that you just put in. The other side of the shaft is going to grab it by the pin that goes through it because usually on all the high lifts, on this differential is a lock there's a lock hole here where you put a grub screw in on this differential we don't have a lock screw hole so and I just noticed that this is a little dry so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of ceramic grease as I dig through my millions of tools here there we go
find the old ceramic grease, which I have multiple tubes of. So we'll start fresh with a new tube. Whoa, and as usual, this, it's under pressure. We're just going to re-grease this uh, differential. The other one still had it on the teeth. This one has absolutely none on it, so we're going to recoat the gear. Just so we don't have to end up in the end coming back and recoating again. Now we reassemble the two halves. There's no uh, sequential order of how you should tighten these, but I do like to alternate. That way I'm not torquing one end down tighter than the other first. So, going on opposite sides on opposite ends. Gonna tighten that up. And we're just going to repeat this process for the next six bolts. I'm going to do the these other six off camera, out of camera range, so I can do it a little bit faster. But you always start. I always start with the outer ends first, and then work my way in. It seems to work better that way. Seeing how there's bearings on the outer ends. You always want to get the ends that have the bearings on them first. Which, oddly enough, well not oddly enough, smart idea. If you've ever looked really closely at any of Tamiya's axles, the screws and the little hex nuts that go on the opposite sides straddle over the uh, bearings. So, it puts pressure down right over the areas directly where the bearings are. And in the meantime, while we're doing this, before I move on to the next step, how many of you guys out there are gonna, guys and gals, I should say, how many of you guys and gals are gonna get the ridge crest or already have the ridge crest? Because I know I want one. If anybody out there's already got one, Feel free to leave a comment down in the uh, comment section and uh, tell me what you personally think of the Ridgecrest. I've heard, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of comments about. Um, I watched the official uh, video for it, and a lot of people weren't impressed. Look, Axel's putting out junk now. Well, when you think about it, what is Axial best known for? Axial is best known for giving you a blank canvas and letting you run with it. That's the fun part. You don't want something that's already put together because that takes the fun out of it, right? All right, now this here is the most important step out of everything. You have to make sure that your splines or your outputs are actually facing the same direction. Otherwise, you're going to have one axle that's going forward and one that's going backwards fighting each other. So you definitely, definitely want to make sure that you do this right. And now it's just a matter of reconnecting your uh, shock brackets from the bottom side to the actual leaf spring. Now for everybody who uh, 
this is probably for 99.9999% of the people out there who are never really going to venture off-road with their uh, Tamiya semis. That's cool. I mean, I just don't want mine to be pavement princesses because I've got... I've got something in mind for mine that you all know about. I'm going to be doing the, uh, the RC logging series. And that would be great and all, but with out a locked axle, as you guys have seen in the, uh, the Outlaw JK and SCX, Silverado SCX 10 video, that was without a lock differential, and you saw how easy the uh, King Hauler spun out and got stuck, and I had to kick it a few times and keep it going. This here is going to eliminate the problem. Now, this video here, I'm not... I'm not doing this video with the intent of just trying to rack up my video count. Because I've got a ton of videos as it is, so I have no need to uh, stack my videos like it would seem I was doing. I just really enjoy doing all this and figure you guys would want to see it too. So I'm doing it for you guys right now. Now, of course, the next step is putting our little... underside uh, attachments back on. Now, if you haven't done it already, now would be the time to go ahead and check and make sure that your uh, your pinions are actually loctited because I've had a few of mine come off because they were not. I've wondered why, hey, why did I just lose drive on this axle? Oh, it's because somebody, not gonna name his name, <coughs> me, um, forgot to uh, Apply thread locker to the grub screw. Got in a hurry. We get it done. Alright, now when we flip it over, this is how your assembly is going to look. And of course, your dog bone is going to fall out quite a few times, so just bear with that. It's not, it's not a big deal. Now you want to check here. Make sure that your axles are actually going the way they're supposed to. And the easiest way to do that is with the drive shaft. And as usual, this one wants to fight. I've already done this three times over so this is just a second nature fight to me we're gonna stick our drive shaft in here make sure that whatever way our axles turning that our splines are turning the same way too which they are so we know we're good to go. Now comes the really freaking fun part, guys. Bring the rear of the truck over. And of course, don't worry about it if your dog bone falls out again. Because you're going to have to do some final adjustments on it anyways. Slide your leaf spring assemblies back up. Now, I did take out the main screw. 
that holds these together. So I'm just going to slide that back into place. Make sure I've got my slip collars that go back in. Now obviously make sure it comes through the other side the way it's supposed to. Get that in there good. Put the lock nut back on and tighten that back down. And now while you still have it down and accessible, Go ahead and flip the truck upside down, reinstall your uh, drive shaft up front, and then go ahead and insert your rear dog bone, hopefully for the last time. Get all your geometry set up here, and then you start attaching your, uh... oh you guys can't even see it, sorry about that. All right, so make sure your drive shaft's back in, your main drive shaft, propeller shaft, whatever you want to call it. Make sure your uh, secondary dog bone is in, and now you start putting these back on. Your lower links. You can go ahead and just uh, hand tie them for now. Just remember that before you go ahead and uh, wrap it up that you still have those down there. So we tighten that down. There's one. There's two. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the little uh, shock pieces back on. So, easiest way to do this is to turn your shock sideways, insert your little bushing. Make sure that the side that flares out is facing the plastic end, or the plastic piece. And you go ahead, it's got, as you guys know, and for those of you that don't know, it's got one hole for the screw, and then there's also a little nipple that sticks out that goes into another hole directly in line with it, so it's guaranteed to line up right, so you know you put it on right. So, as you can see there, top of the shock, bolt through, little brass fitting, plastic. This is one thing that kills me too about these trucks. You figure with the amount of detail that they put into the rest of it, why do they give you plastic shock tabs? You figure that'd be something cool and anodized too. And why, out of all colors in the rainbow, do they have to use pink for the shocks? Some things just baffle me. Okay, there's half of that done. So we can go ahead and put our little uh, colors back on. Now, if you guys are using the highway tires, which are the duals, you would go ahead and at this time put those back on. Since mine are going to be used off-road, this is where I put on my 1.9 inch SCX-10 stock B-Lock rim with a RC four-wheel drive 1.9 uh, Mud Thrasher tire. So with that done, we tighten down our other wheel nut. Take the truck. Flip it over, and we're going to repeat process on that, which actually is not that many steps when you think about it. It looks like a lot of work. Not as bad as I thought. I planned I'd be done here for hours doing this. Almost as bad as, uh, I figured it'd take almost as long as cleaning a set of RC four-wheel drive Predator tracks after taking them through dirt which is a nightmare. I know you guys have uh, probably seen it on uh, Pudgey's channel, Pudgey69. 
the uh, Predator tracks on Super Penny. Awesome ass truck. I love that truck. You guys know me. I'm obviously a Dodge guy, but that damn truck looks so good. That F-250. Not to mention his uh, quad steer dually that he has. <clears throat> that is a beautiful truck as well. Get this one on here. Basically, if you guys can't see this, you're not missing anything that I haven't already told you. Get that final screw in there. Now the shocks are back on, go ahead and remount your hexes for the wheels. And then, of course, last but not least, wheel nut. I'm just using a standard, uh, it's a 7mm long shank socket on basically just a handheld nut driver, quarter inch nut driver. And with that done, you now have a fully locked front and rear differential. All that's left to do now is to slap the cab back on. In my case, it's very easy. Seeing how this truck, I never put the, uh, never put the screws in the back, or the body screws on because it's easier to do it that way. Bam, you got locked. Front and rear differentials. No more getting stuck in the woods. If you get stuck with this now with four wheel drive back here, you've got some issues. Anyway, that'll wrap things up here tonight in the man cave. Um, appreciate everybody's support. All my subscribers, my uh, my sponsors, for making me what I am today, and especially to all my uh, viewers out there, I want to thank each and every one of you for putting up with some of these long videos and a lot of shop work, and not as much trailing, but this year is really bad for... Uh, ticks and all that good stuff so hello I'm not gonna get much uh, trail footage in as of right now but yeah there you go guys there's two uh, two fully functional and capable off-road semi trucks now and I will end up putting together here within the next couple days a nice little trailer for you guys for the upcoming logging series. So be looking for that. Um, also, don't forget I've got always got projects going on here. Head over to uh, rcsparks.com, visit the forums, or you can also. Uh, Talk to me on rccrawler.com bulletin boards. On uh, RC Sparks, my uh, name is Crawler4, the number four, life. And over on uh, RC Crawler, it's Man Cave Media Films. So yeah, guys. It's really late. I'm getting really tired. And everything's done now, so... Hope you guys enjoyed watching this half hour video. I know it's going to take an ass load of time to upload. So I hope you guys enjoyed it.
because I've got to go through a lot of work to get this done. Later, guys.